Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back, of course, to the Time Bomb channel. And a little watch for you here today, which I think that if you're a child of the 80s or if digi-watches are your thing, then this one is going to tickle your tickly bits. The uh, Contained within this uh, minimalistic low-production box, we've got the Countycom TDW SOP Mod 2. And uh, TDW, in this case, standing for Throwdown Watch. Um, and as you can see, so in the package, we've got uh, instructions on the very basic module, our watch, and then just a couple of spare spring bars. Just while I'm, ah, sorry, and I was going to say that um, they gave me, kindly gave me a discount card. So feel free to use that for the next 30 days as of uh, uh, today, I guess. And um, hopefully that's useful to you. And there is our watch for today. Um, so yeah, if uh, you're looking for fancy schmancy or frou-frou, then you probably need to look elsewhere because this is uh, ultra, ultra <laughs> low maintenance. These come in at a mere $24.95. And yes, that includes the strap. And they actually sell, Countycom sell these straps on the website for $19. So yeah, you are getting um, a superb bang for your buck here. And essentially, my understanding from, from reading the blurb on the website is that these are the excess of a government, government order, so uh, or direct surplus, which is superb for us uh, watching others because we can get our hands on something quite unique and different that we might not be able to do under ordinary circumstances. Let me just pause there and zoom in a little bit. Now, when I got the uh, when I first got the email advertising these as being available, they sort of reminded me a little bit of these two um, Casios, simply on the aesthetics and the design simplicity. Yet they are simple digital tool watches that are not vying to be the next master of G. Um, as a mod two, these are a revamp of the original uh, 2002 mil spec by uh, Countycom. I've not seen one of those in hand. I've only seen some upgrade photos of those. Uh, but the key differences between that original one and this one is that this is a much larger uh, resin case body, allowing for better protection of that module, and also meaning that your uh, digi screen then it can be much larger, meaning that it is much more legible. And then I think the other difference is that they've added in the uh, reference numbers there, uh, north and south on the bezel. The key specs then on these things is around 50 mils across, uh, 15 mils uh, deep. North to south, it's 58 mils, and uh, that's a little long. Um, and I think it's extend your, ex <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> ex exacerbated by the fact that the lugs are quite stubby and certainly do not drop below uh, the, the, uh, the underbody here, the undercarriage. Uh, on mills then, for the luggage here, we've got 20 mils uh, lugs. And this is a reference before is Maritak's own NATO style strap and comes with their own TI-20 titanium buckle, which I believe was part of that original government order. Um, On to the back. The uh, spring bars there are quite tight to the case body. So I think that strap swap outs are going to be both uh, complex or alternatively and limited to the OEM NATOs. Um, I don't have any other 20 uh, mil strips that, that would work on this e uh, here at home. Um, so I'm going to need to see what I can, what I can find out there to see. Because you can see that the, the strap bends right into uh, what we have. A, let me just pop it off there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It, it pops directly into the uh, case body, meaning that, just see what I'm doing on camera. Um, it means that, yeah, I think it could be challenging to, um, to find some alternatives. Let's just zoom in there and we can see the uh, little holdings, as you can see there. Just from the position there, I think it could be complex uh, to find some alternatives. Um, and I'll come into the reason why I want to find some alternatives in a second, um, but it's primarily due to the uh, the fit on wrist. Um, the module as well, which I referenced previously, um, is pretty straightforward. Um, controlled then by a button down here at the number eight through very simple pushes. So obviously on our main screen, we've got day of the week. Um, it's the US style month and day, and then obviously uh, yeah, time below. First press, nice positive uh, beeping sound. We've got our stopwatch, uh, split second timings, and then our single alarm. 
And then the third press brings us back to our time. And as you can see, it's automatically shifted into uh, uh, time, time setting so that we can move across. Now you can see the H there to the right of the 44, meaning we are in 24 hour time. And I'll show you what happens when we scroll through, we get past, it goes into uh, AM. So we've come off 24 hour time. And as we go through into PM, it indicates there that we are in PM. And so if you want to get back to 24 hour time, you just need to scroll through one more time uh, to, to get back to, uh, to that option. I simply prefer my watches being in, uh, in 24 hours, especially on the Degis. Um, and, and that is then us. And that brings us back here. The bottom down here at the floor, we've got our lock button. And of course, then at the top there, we've got our chrono start stop button. Um, the light button uh, triggers the ele electroluminescence, which looks like this in, in the dark. And to me, it's super, super effective. It's just the right light exactly where you need it, where you want it. Um, so top marks there for that. The pushers that I was uh, operating there just on the side are quite shiny and quite large. Um, if we were to compare them, say, to the uh, 5600 I have here, you can see they're almost double the size and they're also uh, convex and, and not flat as they are on the 5600s, uh, meaning that they are easy to, uh, to operate, but again, slippery when wet. I'm not sure if we can pick it up on the screen. I think we can just in that top right hand corner, you can see. So on the screen, we've got a sticky uh, screen protector. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think I'm going to leave it on here because it doesn't uh, obscure the, uh, the clarity of the digits too much. And I think it's pretty fair to say for 24, 25 bucks, you're not getting sapphire on these things. So I think I'd leave the screen protector on to protect whatever they've got underneath there, whether it's mineral or, or some other alternative. Um, what else was I going to say? So yeah, just to come back onto the, uh, the case back there. So we've got very simple four screws in and we've got a little faint seahorse logo on the back there. And then battery code, obviously the CR, um, 2025, um, very easy to source and very easy to swap out. Just let, pop that case back off. And then, yeah, it's just it's so simple and, and won't impact on, on your, uh, ATMs, uh, your five ATMs, which I'm going to talk about a little later on. Um, so the design brief clearly um, for this government contract didn't want to make it the next Mudmaster or the Protrek, and I'm really, really, really okay with that. These things are quite unique. I think it's difficult to find unique digital watches nowadays because they tend to be quite, um, well, they, Casio just dominates that market, don't they? A couple of other brands come close, but I don't think they do come close. So this one's pretty unique in that sense. And I think for the bang for your buck, it's brilliant. But to me, it is let down a little bit by those five ATMs. Um, if they only could have made it 10, I think it would have been a brilliant, brilliant, you know, a watch that you don't need to think about wearing. With only five ATMs or 50 meters, to me, that, that makes me just a little bit nervous. Um, you know, if I'm bathing the baby or, you know, I'm doing a washing up, I'm, I'm be concerned about water getting into these things. A little bit frustrating. Um, the second aspect that I'm, I'm struggling with at the moment, I've only been wearing it a couple of days though, so bear with me on this one, is fit on wrist. And that's primarily due, as, you, uh, as I was referencing before, between the lugs and the gap that is caused by the, um, the type of strap here. It's going to almost get my little finger in on those corners there. Um, and that to me is just saying it's waiting to get caught on something as you go by. A little bit frustrating that could reduce um, the, the the impact or the negative impact of that with a different strap i'll update you if that's the case and i think again for the price and the cool factor i'm going to try hard to overlook those two aspects these do then come in three different colors obviously this this the matte black and um, with then something a little bit more bright you've got the uh, international orange and then a very nice muted og og od green um, and I confess that then when this one arrived, I kind of liked it so much that I went back on the website and I've ordered myself the green and the orange one as well. Um, so I'll show you those as and when they do arrive. And I think what I'm going to do is that we're not far off 2000 subscribers. Uh, so when I hit that, I think this one's going to be the giveaway to celebrate the channel having grown bigger than I possibly could have imagined. If you're a fan of Digis, 
then I think this one probably going to look pretty cool in your uh, collection, as I say, because they're not easy to get hold of. If you're not the recipient of that government contractor, then it could be difficult to buy, and probably on eBay, uh, because of the success of that first mill spec that they came up with, um, these could go for some interesting prices in the future, or at least that's their hope anyway. Um, but I think that you're just getting, for that price, a really great fun digi watch, um, you know, that's going to give you hours of fun for really quite a long time. But that, of course, is just my view. Over to you guys. What do you reckon? Uh, too cheap, too simple, or does it just hit the uh, sweet, bot, sweet spot of being the new best uh, budget DigiWatch um, out there? That's that one. Just before I head off, though, I wanted to, um, to, 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 to answer a request from one of our uh, subscribers and viewers, um, and that was on how I went about fixing the, um, the bezel on the Duro Marlin. Um, so Reseda mate, this is for you. Um, it's, as, as I mentioned in the, uh, in, the, in the comments, no great mystery. I just used a little bit of masking tape. Um, let me just find the end there. And applied it to, uh, or between the uh, bezel and the case body. So just um, on the lugs here, slip, the, uh, slip this in. And uh, it's yeah, difficult to do this side of the camera, so I'm just going to do it the other side of the camera. <laughs> the, and then with a flat blade, um, slip it in underneath, and you will feel that it bites and you've got purchase. This obviously then is just to protect your stainless steel so that you're not damaging it too much there. Get in here, get yourself some good purchase, and just, just prize it a little bit. Just leave it a fraction. Repeat on all four corners. And that, for me, then sprung the uh, bezel into life. It's still quite stiff, um, but I like it like that because it's you know it doesn't doesn't shift out of place, um, and then it works perfectly well. Um, yeah, that was the thing that spooked me about this. I thought I mean, it just I think it's just where they'd uh, pressed it on and uh, either maybe via machine or somebody quite heavy-handed. Uh, watch is watch is going well. Um, anyway, dude, hope that helps you, um, and, uh, with yours and I hope it, uh, you know, doesn't make, make you send the watch back as I was considering doing. Anyway, um, there's our county com, as I say, our throwdown watch. Hope you've enjoyed that guys. Thanks as always for your time and your view. And of course, until the next watch vid, watch vid, this is your host to be signing off. Cheers guys. <laughs>